A seller provides misinformation during the purchase of a condo. What does that mean to the deal? Good morning, my name is Mike Rennick. I'm a broker associate with Team Rennick Real Estate Services. We're part of that great Keller Williams on the Water family. And welcome to Real Estate Done Right. Let me introduce you to our guest today, our guest every Wednesday morning is Michael Hankin, a local, he, he doesn't like it when I do this, but I've got his intro memorized, a local prominent real estate attorney. He uh, actually is a Floridian, he, he grew up in this state. He is a board certified attorney. He's got all the credentials and he's all around a great guy. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Good Welcome. to see you. Welcome. Same here. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we have a write-in and uh, Rhonda is kind of perplexed. Rhonda is a buyer and Rhonda was in the process of buying a condo for $2 million. And during the process, as they walked through, um, they found three portable air conditioning units in the bedroom closets. So Rhonda reached through her agent to the selling agent and was asked, is there a problem? And the seller said no. He just prefers to keep the bedrooms ice cold and he doesn't want the rest of the condo to, to, to do that, the expense. So lo and behold though, as it moved forward and through the inspection process, they found that virtually no air was coming out of the ductwork for the bedroom. So obviously the air conditioning wasn't going to be sufficient. So her question is, what does that mean to the deal at this point? Um, should, was the seller obligated to disclose? Should the seller disclose? You know, this gets into what you and I are all about. What's the legal standard here and what's the ethical standard? Sure. And it's an interesting issue that comes up quite commonly. Under Florida law, a seller is obligated to disclose anything which is not readily observable and which materially affects the value of the property. In this particular case, you said it was a, uh, Rhonda mentioned it was a $2 million condo. Correct. And an air conditioning system for a condominium, what would you estimate it would cost to fix? Easily under $10,000. So $10,000 compared to the $2, or $2 million sales price likely does not materially affect the value of the property. So I would say that the law does not strictly require the seller to disclose that information. So if there is a material impact to the value that has to be disclosed by the seller? Correct. Then you get into the gray area, what's material and what's not material maybe? That's correct. And it also is something that cannot be readily observable. So here the seller could argue that the airflow into the bedroom was easily observable. They could see how much or how little air was in the room based upon the relative temperature of the room. Um, so a seller, I think, strictly may not be required to disclose that. Now, the law, while it does not absolutely require the disclosure, does prevent a seller from making misrepresentations. Okay, so when the question was asked and it came back that there's nothing wrong, what, what does that do to the deal at that point? So there, that may be a different source of recovery for the buyer. If the seller made an affirmative representation that was false and said, those air conditioners are in the closet just because I like it very cold. Okay. If that wasn't true, if those air conditioners are in the closet to provide just the basic level of cooling for those rooms because the main air conditioner didn't work, then that seller may be liable for that statement. Okay. You'd have to really prove what the seller knew, what was disclosed, what was said, and it's gonna hinge a lot on the specific representations. So that's the legal standard. That's, in this case, I would call it, in my, my own opinion, that's the floor. Um, I think there's a, a better answer than you provided, but it's not the legal answer, it's the ethical. 
I agree. It's not, I think, the right thing to do in this situation. What What do you think the right thing for a seller to have done in this situation is? I think it has to be to disclose because, but let's say that the seller had all good intentions, okay? And let's walk down that path for a second. It doesn't mean a judge is going to rule in his favor anyway. There's still potential risk there. But, but I always believe full disclosure, full transparency, you sleep better at night, nothing can come back and bite you during the deal and, and have the deal negated or, or whatever. So I, whether I'm representing a buyer or a seller, it's absolutely imperative that you have full disclosure. Now representing a buyer, what I always recommend is that a, a full inspection is done on the property. Some folks will argue that with a condo, there's not a lot that can go wrong. It might not be a good value in money. I personally disagree. A $2 million condo, a $500 inspection fee, to me seems like pretty good insurance. I couldn't agree more. I don't understand that there's people who will buy a car for $20,000 and take it to a mechanic to have it looked at, but the same person won't spend $500 on a $2 million condominium. It's just like anything else, it has a lot of mechanical parts. And inspections are very important and can find things like this. Because while you hope everybody's going to do the right thing and make the disclosures, the law isn't at that point. It's not at the same level of ethical practice that you're used to. Right. And as a result, inspections are necessary because sellers may not make proper representations, may fail to make representations they should have, or they may say, like in this situation, it doesn't have to be disclosed, so I'm not going to. The, the thing about this, and to, and to bring closure to this, the buyer ultimately, uh, because of the type of offer contract it was written on, she was allowed to escape. So she walked away from the deal. You know, even though, and um, you know, I reached out, I actually talked to her. Even though the cost was less than ten thousand dollars to remedy it. She had no trust in the seller at that point. So she just wasn't comfortable. She exercised the right in the as-is contract. That'll be a segment of a future show, what rights they have between the two different offer contracts. So she walked away and today she got her deposit back and she's very happy and she tells me she's still out there looking for a condo. Well, that's great. I'm glad she was able to do it within her inspection period and she didn't have to have the dispute. It's uh, great that she was had a way out of the contract and was able to get her deposit back. Um, too often, people wait too long. And those those deadlines are really critical in the contract. Absolutely, Michael. I want to thank you for sharing your thoughts. For those of you that are watching, thank you. We intend to grow this segment to cover more issues. Reach out to us through what what is our email? Ad I have a terrible memory. What's our email address? It's topics at teamrenic.com. There we go. I knew the second half of that. So, you know, give us a call, send it through email. We want to know what you want to know, and we will address every segment from two aspects. What's the legal aspect? And Mr. Hankin will handle that. And then Mike and I together will handle the ethical aspect. And I think you're going to find us on the same page more often than not. Um, if we can find something where we disagree, it might make it a little more exciting and, and fun. But again, thank you for watching. Help us grow this segment. We want it to be about issues that are important to you. Thanks, everyone. Michael, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Great to have you.